Hello everyone, I'm Jong Hun Nam at the University of Rochester. I have been studying the mechanics of the hair bundle and the organ of Corti. First of all, I appreciate the mechanics of hearing organizers, Bastian Nett and Wei Dong for leading this effort. I will assume that the audience may welcome some refresher regarding hair bundle hair cell anatomy, and they are interested in physics and mechanics aspect of hair bundle mechanical transduction. The first two thirds of this talk is regarding current knowledge of hair bundle mechanics, while the remainder part is some example research of myself. The hair cells are the sensory receptor cells in the inner ear. The hair cells are named so after their apical structure that looks like a bundle of hairs. These microscope images are from the turtle utricle showing hair bundles at different locations of macular surface. Scanning electron microscope images are informative, but they could provide misleading impression as if the strocilia are soft like a sea anemone. Actually, hair bundles are not soft. In terms of mechanics, the hair bundle and the tall buildings like this 828 meter tall Burj Khalifa building are comparable in several ways. Both structures are founded on fiber reinforced base. Both structures are tapered. Both structures are subjected to similar level of strain. For example, on the normal condition, the Burj Khalifa sways by two meters, which is comparable to 24 nanometers displacement of a 10 micrometer tall hair bundle. Finally, both structures are active. They adapt themselves to external mechanical stimulations. In this talk, I will discuss the operating principles of vertebrate hair, hair bundles in mechanical terms. A single hair, hair bundle consists of a few dozen stereocilia. In a hair bundle, there is one or no kinocilium. K indicated as K in this figure. The kinocilium is in the tall edge of the bundle. In the mammalian cochlea, the kinocilium degenerate as the stereocilia bundle develops. In this panel A shows the top-down view of hair bundles. The stereocilia are arranged hexagonally and they are bound by fine filament. The stereocilia are arranged like a staircase forming monotonic height gradient where the kinocilium is at the tall end. Among those interciliary filament, one type stand out while all the filament connect in all three hexagonal axes. The team links, these red colored lines, run along the axis of the steepest height gradient. This axis is called the EI axis, excitatory inhibitory axis. Unlike all the interciliary filament, the tip links run obliquely from the tip of a shorter stereocilia to the shaft of a taller stereocilia. Each stereocilium looks like a sharpened pencil of which rootlet inserted into the top surface of the hair cell. The stereocilium is between 0.1 and 0.5 micrometer thick. The height of a hair bundle ranges from one micrometer to 100 micrometers. Typically, the tips of a stereocilia bundle are attached to an overlying gel-like structure, such as the autoconia in the utricle and secure or the tectorial membrane in the cochlea. However, some hair bundles are believed to stand freely without being firmly attached to an overlying structure. The hair bundles in different organs have surprisingly diverse shapes, although they perform the same function, transducing mechanical vibrations into mechanical signals. Panels A, B, and C are from the red cochlea. Panels A and B are the outer cell hair bundles at different locations. The inner hair cell hair bundles in C looks like a, the sail of a boat. 
panels D through G are from the utricle. D and E are from the mouse utricle, and F and G are from the total utricle. Panel H is from the total semicircular canal. In general, those hair bundles operating at higher frequencies, such as mammalian hair bundles, have a smaller number of rows. Here are three rows and more columns. Some hair bundles in the back cochlea have just two rows of stroselia. Some vestibular hair bundles, such as the, the one in panel F, have more rows than columns. There must be some functional consequences of these bundle shapes, but much remains unknown. Despite this variance, we also see some shared characteristics. First, stereocilia are bound by filament. Second, the hexagonally arranged stereocilia have monotonic height gradient. Finally, one type of filament, the timnings, run along the axis of stitches height gradient. Let us look deeper into each stereocilium. The stereocilium consists of a cylindrical shaft and a tapering rootlet. The shaft is packed with a few hundred actin fibers. The actin fibers are bound by numerous filaments indicated by these arrows. A fraction of actin fibers are inserted deeply into the firm surface, apical surface of hair cell called the cuticular plate. As the rootlet core is electron dense, often it appears darker in electron microscope images. The basic, the basic functional unit of a hair bundle consists of two stereocilia and a timning. Let us try to estimate the stereocilium stiffness from two considerations. First, rootlet geometry. Second, molecular level structure of the rootlet. This is one form of beam equation. The change of angular displacement of beam length is proportional to applied moment M and inversely proportional to the flexural rigidity EI. Here, E is the Young's modulus of the material. I is the area moment of inertia of the cross section. The area moment of inertia is proportional to the radius to the power of four, that is the rootlet if the rootlet is a quarter thick, as compared to the shaft, the rootlet is 256 times more compliant than the shaft. Here, the stereocilium is considered as if it is isotropic. The ultrastructure of the rootlet suggests otherwise. The numerous crosslinks in the shaft will prevent shear displacement between actin fibers. In contrast, in the rootlet, according to immunohistological observations, there are much less crosslinks. Instead, there are circumferentially binding proteins. This rootlet ultrastructure implicates that there will be substantial shear displacement between the actin fibers. The circumferential binder will protect the bundle from buckling or splaying. Depending on the cross-linking strength, the angular stiffness, here indicated kappa r, of the rootlet can change more than 100 times. Here, the factor of r over r0 to the squared, where r is the radius of the rootlet and r0 is the radius of a single actin filament. This opens the possibility that the hair bundle stiffness can vary substantially despite similar apparent dimensions depending on the ultrastructure of actin crosslinking in the rootlet. If we put the realistic anatomical properties, the measured angular stiffness of stereocilium falls between these two extreme cases, perfect crosslinking and no crosslinking. In short, the rootlet is considered highly flexible as compared to the last overhead bundle. 
Now let us see why the kidneys run obliquely, unlike the other interciliary filament that bind the stereocilia. Because the rootlet is much compliant than the shaft, reducing the stereocilia into a rigid bar rotating about its rootlet is a reasonable approximation. Then a pair of stereocilia can be represented by this kinematics diagram of two rigid bars connected by two elastic fine links. The 170 nanometer long kin link is the critical player in the stereocilia bundle because the lower end of the kin link is connected to the mechanotransduction channels. The upper end of kin link is connected to the actin core through myosin motors. Severing the kin link is a popular way to abolish the hair bundle mechanotransduction. As the stereocilia and their rootlet uh, in insertions bend, as the stereocilia bend at their rootlet insertions, while the horizontal connector does not change its length, the team link elongates or contract, reflecting the bundle deflection. Here, the geometric factor gamma correlate the bundle tip displacement x with the elongation of team link delta. The bearing tension of the team link is delivered to the mechanotransduction channel. In short, the stereocilia bundle is designed so that its deflection energy is efficiently delivered to the target molecule, the transduction channel. To be simplistic, Hair bundle mechanics can be reduced to a single degree of freedom system using only two elastic components. The angular stiffness of the rootlet and the stiffness of putative gating spring can represent the hair bundle mechanics fairly well. This right diagram is a linearized model of this hair bundle. The geometric gain gamma and the term h squared are needed to translate the angular motion into linear motion. The H is the bundle height here. To consider the full size hair bundle, the hair bundle stiffness is proportional to the number of stereocilia n and inversely proportional to the bundle height squared. The stiffness of a hair bundle is a key parameter to discuss the contribution of hair bundle mechanics to the inner ear function. Therefore, there has been there have been substantial efforts to measure bundle stiffness experimentally. Those studies have used three different methods. Here, I will discuss them. The most popular method to use is to use calibrated micro cantilevers. In principle, the AFM, atomic force microscopy, belongs to this category. One of the earliest measurements was performed by Crawford and Fairplace in 1985 when they measured the mechanical responses of total cochlear hair bundles. The stiffness of micrometer thick glass fiber was calibrated first. The probe tip pushing the tip of a hair bundle projected to a pair of a photodiode. The differential current of a photodiode indicated the bundle deflection. This diagram of two springs in series is equivalent to this probe method. KHB and KP represent the stiffness of hair bundle and the probe respectively. As the base of the probe moves by X1, the bundle deflects by X2. The hair bundle stiffness is represented uh, by this equation. A practical consideration of this method is that the measured stiffness value is more accurate and the probe stiffness is comparable to the bundle stiffness. Using this method, Crawford and Ferry Place tested their hypothesis that her bundle is hinged at its root lab insertion. If the hypothesis hold, the compliance is proportional to the height squared of the force application. This solid curve shows the parabolic relationship supporting their hypothesis. 
fluid jet has been used as a non-contact stimulation method. In this approach, a micro cantilever with this dimension comparable to the width of a hair bundle was deflected by the fluid jet. From this calibration, the driving voltage of fluid jet was related with the fluid force applied to the microstructure. With a careful consideration of my fluid dynamics, this method has been shown to yield reasonable stiffness values comparable to the prob probe method. The third method uses the thermodynamical principle to obtain the stiffness of microstructures. Microstructures in the fluid fluctuate stochastically as the water molecule bouncing on their surface. For a structure like hair bundle with the stiffness of approximately one millinewton per meter, the amplitude of motion, fluctuating motion, is on the order of one nanometer. Because the inertial force hair bundle is negligible as compared to viscous drag and elastic force, the hair bundle mechanics may behave like a first order low pass filter. From power spectral analysis of random fluctuation at the bundle tip, the stiffness and damping property uh, can be obtained. This left panel, panel shows the earliest example of this technique applied to hair bundle mechanics performed by Dink, Webb, and Hotspice in 1989. Bestenhoff and Goodyear and their colleagues use the same technique to measure the stiffness contribution of interciliary filament. The thick curve here is the power spectrum of intact hair bundle, and the thin curve is from the bundle with the disrupted timlings. As expected, high frequency responses were hardly affected as it is dominated by dissipating components but the compliance increased by a factor of two, as indicated by this bifurcation at low frequencies. I, myself, together with my colleagues, used a, a 3D computer model of hair bundle to uh, reproduce best ton of adherence result to identify the interciliary filament stiffness. These are hair bundle stiffness measurement in the literature. There are more studies, but I chose the earlier studies for those that are dedicated to stiffness measurement. I apologize for small font. The glass fiber techniques are uh, used more frequently and the fluctuation analysis are rare. The stiffness value ranges three orders of magnitude from 10 micronewton per meter to 10 millinewton per meter. Some studies measure the steady state stiffness, while other studies measure the instantaneous stiffness. This matters when hair bundle is not a passive structure. The hair bundle is not passive. The hair bundle is active because it interacts with the tiny molecules in it, the mechanical transduction channels. In the following, I'll introduce the characteristics of a hair cell mechanical transduction and connect them with the bundle mechanics. This is a pioneering measurement of a hair cell mechanical transduction by David Corey and James Hotchkiss in 1977. So to pattern of mechanical stimulation were delivered to the bullfrog circular hair bundle via glass probe. At the same time, using, using an electrode, the intracellular potential was recorded. At small stimulation, much less than one micrometer, the electrical response followed the stimulation pattern. However, as the stimulation level increases, the electrical response saturated. The bottom panel is the input output relationship of hair bundle mechanical transduction. The hair bundle mechanical transduction has an operating range. When a stimulation exceeds the range, the hair bundle transduction is not sensitive. For this specific hair bundle, the operating range 
read roughly from negative 0.3 micrometers to positive 1.3 micrometers. As the experimental technique enhances, the measured operating range tend to narrower than previous studies. This is the earliest uh, mechanical transduction measurement from the mammalian cochlea. Russell and Selick measured the intracellular potential in response to sound from the inner hair cells in the guinea pig cochlea. They reported several exciting observations that were reconfirmed in later studies, including the DC offset to tone burst, nonlinear relationship between hair cell receptor potential and the sound pressure level, and the sharp tuning at the cellular level. The mechanical transduction has the polarity. Along a specific direction, the hair bundle mechanical transduction is most sensitive. When stimulated 90 degrees to the most sensitive direction, hair bundle mechanical transduction is least sensitive. The most sensitive direction is aligned with the axis of timing arrangement, the EI axis. The EI axis is the ladder straightforward in the cochlea because all hair cells are aligned in the same radial direction. However, for the autolytic organs, like the total utricle in this figure, the polarity of hair bundles will matter for their function. This figure depicts the macular surface of the total utricle. The arrows represent the EI axis of the hair bundle on it. There is an imaginary line across across the macular surface, across which the polarity reverses. For a maintained stimulation, the transduction current of a hair cell declines over time. This response is called the hair cell adaptation. In this plot, a family of step displacement were applied the tip of the on hair bundle and the resulting transduction current were measured using wholesale patch, patch clamp technique. While the displacement was maintained, the current decayed within a few milliseconds. In this lab cochlear hair cell case, the time constant of adaptation is a fraction of milliseconds. In vestibular hair cells, the adaptation time constant range is a few to tens of milliseconds. When a family of stimulations are applied, on top of sustained step stimulation, the mechanical transduction is very similar to panel, panel A case, as if the operating range has been reset within a couple of milliseconds. From panel A and panel B responses, the current versus displacement relationship were obtained as shown in panel C. The empty circles indicate the response from the resting state in panel A. The filled circle are the, the response from panel B on the 0.4 micrometer sustained step. The IX relationship shifted to the light about 0.4 micrometers, comparable to the sustained step displacement. Has been observed that the operating point of the IX relationship not shift not only by sustained stimulation but also by the level of intracellular calcium concentration, although it is currently debated. Resetting the operating point for a, for maintained stimulation will help detecting DC stimulation like the gravity. The utricle encodes the head orientation with respect to the gravity, this red arrow here. As the head tilt to the left side, the mass of the autolysis layer causes the shear deformation of the compliant layer where hair bundles reside. In this cartoon, this section of five hair cells correspond to the broken line in the macular surface map. 
four hair bundles are excited while one hair bundle is inhibited according to their polarity. As the head position is maintained, the hair cells adapt to the position so that they recover their initial sensitivity. Therefore, the adaptation helps to maintain high sensitivity while achieving a wide range of operation. However, this functional scenario of adaptation may not apply to AC signal detectors, such as the co cochlea. Here is an explanation of how hair cell adaptation can contribute to hearing function. If a stimulation is applied at the speed much slower than the adaptation, the stimulation will not be detected. That is, the adaptation, the adaptation functions like a high pass filter. On the other hand, it takes time to activate the transduction channel. If a stimulation is applied at much faster than the channel activation can catch up, the stimulation will not be detected. That is, the channel activation functions like a low pass filter. Combining these two filters, hair cell mechanical transduction can form a band pass filter that can contribute to frequency selection. With this said, these filters are blunt as compared to physiological tuning quality. This bandpass filter theory does not fully explain the high frequency selectivity of memory and hearing. There are more progressive theories regarding the functional role of hair cell adaptation. For example, to explain spontaneous oscillations of hair bundle in vitro, Martin Adair and Wilpan and Duke suggested a theory that the adaptation places the hair bundle in the dynamic condition near the hook bifurcation. Their theory explained the observed spontaneous oscillations in two components. A fast component related to channel opening and closing and a slow component related to the adaptation. The hair bundle will respond constructively to the external stimulation of the same frequency as the spontaneous oscillations, while off-tuned stimulation will negatively interact with this spontaneous motion. As such, hair cell adaptation can contribute to frequency tuning. The authors of these two papers argued that this spontaneous motion contribute to signal amplification However, at least for mammalian cochlear amplification, this hair bundle amplification theory is not widely accepted. The gating compliant theory explains how the hair bundle interact with the mechanotransduction channels. The theory has been presented in a concise form together with convincing measurement data by Howard and Hutchins in 1988. They used the compliant probe to apply step forces to hair bundle. At the same time, the receptor potential of the hair cell was measured. Panel A shows the show one set of data. From top to bottom, the curves are bundle tip displacement, receptor potential, and the applied force represented by the probe based displacement. Panel B Represent, represent a set of uh, measurement results at different stimulation levels. Panel C shows the relationship between the bundle stiffness and the displacement. A notable observation was that the bundle stiffness was not constant. The displacement of uh, one, one, about 100 nanometer is infinitesimal as compared to the bundle height of about 10 micrometers. The authors showed that the most compliant displacement coincides with the displacement at which the mechanical transduction is most sensitive. Three equations are minimal to represent 
the interaction between the hair bundle and the mechanical transduction channel. In this first mechanical equation, this x sub a and the t o terms represent the active force from the adaptation motor and the mechanical transduction channel. The second equation defines how elastic energy modulates the channel state. Term z representing the intrinsic sensitivity of the channel is called the single channel gating force. The third equation describes the effort of the adaptation motor to maintain a prescribed level of tension. K sub a represent the adaptation speed and x a zero represent the level of target tension. In the following slide, we'll go over the theory step by step by following an experimental example like in panel A. Let us first define some graphical symbols. This green tube symbolizes the transduction channel. The team link color will reflect the tension, the level of tension it bears. There are two force generating mechanisms symbolized by gears. One represents the fast adaptation motor and the other represents the slow adaptation motor. Calcium and potassium ions are indicated as colored dots. We will consider a hypothetical case when this minimal hair bundle is subjected to a step force at its, at its tip in the direction toward the taller axis. These two sets of measurement data demonstrate the interaction between the stereocilia and the microtransduction channel. While a step force was applied and removed, the time course of transduction current and bundle displacement were measured. The electrical and the mechanical responses look quite different, but they seem correlated at the same time. Here is an explanation, explanation of this response. When the hair bundle is at last, the team link is tensed by the adaptation motors. The lower of adaptation motor is to have the channel ready to open by maintaining the right level of tension. At this described moment, the channel is, is in its closed state. In reality, the channel will stochastically open and close due to thermal fluctuation. These red crosses on the right graph correspond to the state of the left cartoon. As the bundle deflects toward this taller edge by external force, the team link complex elongates and the tension in the team link increases, indicated by this red color in the team link. The transduction channel is about to open but still closed. So in, the, in this graph, red dot indicates applied force, closed the channel, and the bundle deflection. As the channel opens, the tension in the team link is relaxed. Due to this gating swing, stereocilia deflect further toward the right. Here, this gating, um, gating swing has been estimated between a um, fraction of nanometers to a few nanometers. Due to electric potential between extra and the intras intracellular fluid, cations such as the potassium and calcium flow into the cell through the mechanical transduction channel. Most current is carried by potassium ions. Calcium triggers the fast adaptation motor, which closes the channel. Due to this closure, the tension in the team link increases again, and the bundle tip is pulled back, which is indicated with this orange colored arrow. Shown here is just one out of different fast adaptation theories. Some believe that the fast adaptation further relaxes the bundle based on different observations than this graph. Others believe that intracellular 
calcium is irrelevant to the adaptation. Some alternative theories, examples are shown here in the bottom. The increased tension in the team link is relaxed as the slow adaptation motor moves the upper insertion point. As a result, the bundle tip moves further toward the tall edges. This relaxation occurs at much longer time scale than the fast adaptation. Say, for cochlear outer cells, the slow adaptation time constant is on the order of a few milliseconds, while fast adaptation time constant is less than one millisecond. Now let us switch gears. From here, uh, I will introduce my own research related to hair bundle mechanics. Through uh, computational model simulations and physiological experiment, we explored how popular experimental methods can cause uncertainty in estimating the biophysical properties of hair cell mechanotransduction. By the popular experimental method, I mean the probe stimulation technique. Our computer model has two components. One is the mechan mechanical model of hair bundle. The other is the mechanotransduction channel kinetics model. An outer cell hair bundle from AP curtain of red cochlea was modeled using finite element method. The model geometry, such as the stereocilia arrangement, tight and intercellular linkages, was obtained from microscopic images. There are three structural components. The stereocilia are modeled as Timoshenko beam, beam element, while that, uh, the Timoshenko beam element allows bending, shear, and the axial deformation. The team links horizontal connectors are described by link element, which allows axial deformation only. The mechanotransduction channels are at the lower end of the team links. Differential equations were integrated using an implicit integration scheme. The typical time step size was one microsecond. For calcium binding site in, in the channel was, was assumed for each, stereos, each calcium binding state, there are open, open and closed configuration. Two rate coefficients determine the steep the speed of transition between the state. Uh, one is the KB, the calcium binding rate, and the other one is KA, channel opening and closing rate. The transition between the state is stochastic. These bundle mechanics and the channel kinetics interact through the tension in the team link. The term F here represents the tension in the team link. At any moment of time, the team link tension computed from the FE model is fed to the channel model. In turn, the channel state, either open or closed, determines the unstretched length of the team link in the finite element model. This is how typical experiment is performed, which we simulated with the computer model. To fit with the bundle, the tip uh, of the glass fiber is dipped into an elastomer to form a bulbous tip. This is to achieve even a stimulation of the V-shaped hair bundle. When considering the actual dimension of the stimulating fiber tip, this lack to cartoon does not reflect the layers very well. It may look more like this. Unlike the pectoral membrane attachment, it is not possible to push the different columns of stereocilia uniformly. I'd like to draw your attention that the expected operating range of outer cell hair bundle, outer cell is less than 100 nanometers. The thickness of this single stereocilium is 250 nanometers. This is the model of a probe tip contacting the stereocilia. Red color indicated contacting surface. Green color is about to contact 
and gray not contact. This movie clip shows an ideal stimulation condition when the when the all stereocilia columns are pulled uniformly, as indicated by this red arrow. This contour plot shows the bundle deformation and the forcing condition of the bundle. This is top down view of the bundle. Each circle indicates a stereocilia. Red dot are the stereocilia open channels with the open channels, and the gray dot are the stereocilia with the closed channels. A step force of 900 piconewton was applied for 0.6 millisecond. You will see that 0.6 millisecond is enough for this low frequency cell to activate and adapt itself in preparation for next stimulus. You will see that the, this one is all the simulation in 2008. The channel location is inaccurate. As the um, stimulation is delivered, channels open and close stochastically, as it deflected, while displacement maintained, current quickly decays within a fraction of millisecond. Again, this simulation describe, describes desired experimental scenario of even stimulation. This is more realistic, uneven stimulation by round probe tip, simulating similar condition. The stereocilia columns contacting the probe activate more while the stereocilia columns not contacted by probe tip are less sensitive. So we simulated uh, uh, different probe shapes and the panel E summarizes this effort. This thick black curve in panel E indicate ideal condition such as the help under stimulated by the tectorial natural tectorial membrane while these three colored curves indicate ix relationship depending on probe shapes indeed a better fitting probe helps to imitate natural condition but still it's not enough when the probe contact is poor the ix relationship becomes very wide Notably, this black curve basically is a two state configuration and uh, the IX relationship curve is point symmetry about this half activating point while the red and green colored IX curve is not symmetric. In the past, there were studies that deflected the hair bundle with a very narrow tip like AFM probe and very thin glass probe, and they observed bundles playing. We reproduced their result to identify the stiffness of cross-linking between hair, hair bundles and found that 2.5 millinewton per meter of the interciliary stiffness. The simulation condition or reproduced with the experimental observation uh, done by my colleagues in Stanford University, Tony Leach and Anton Fang. Anton is now in Colorado. They stimulated the red cochlear outensile hair bundle with the probes diff at uh, different shapes, probe tips. And they also observed the IX relationship became broader as they use unfit probe tips. This is an alternative way to stimulate, stimulate the hair bundle using uh, fluid jet. So when the fluid jet applied to a one extreme end of a hair bundle, 
only the columns of the strocilia stimulated uh, responded. The fluid jet was more beneficial to stimulate entire hair bundle evenly. So why we care about this stimulating condition? Because two fundamental parameters of mechanical transduction channel might have been uh, incorrectly estimated from the artifact of experiment. Such the, those two parameters are gating spring stiffness, KGS, and gating swing. These are some of the results that the, the of a previous study estimated the gating spring stiffness and the gating swing. And our computer model the estimated the, the close to upper limit of the gating spring stiffness and the regarding gating swing, we predicted the lower limit compared to the measured gating swing stiffness. And the single channel gating force is smaller uh, compared to other studies. It could be difference between uh, different hair cell types. Others are mostly vestibular hair, hair, cell, hair, hair cell bundles. Ours here is the red cochlear out hair cell, or it could be really uh, experimental artifact. The second study I would like to sh show you as uh, the application of uh, continuing mechanics to hair bundle mechanics is this uh, total utricle hair bundle study. So thus far, the, 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 the study I showed you is a single hair bundle and this one shows the uh, hair bundles interacting with this external structure like this autoconia. The hypothesis we tried to test was that different types of uh, mechanical coupling between autoconia layer and the hair bundle help to help the utricle to detect both static and the dynamic stimulation. The cell E has uh, plugged deeply, cell E hair bundle is plugged deeply into stiff autoconia layer, this kinocilium is deeply into the autoconia, while this cell S is attached to soft gel layer. So we try to test that cell, if cell S is uh, stimulated viscosely instead of uh, by the autoconia motion elastically. The macromechanical transfunction of the turtle was represented by this single degree of freedom equation. And uh, from this equation, the relative shear motion XOL the autoconial layer relative to shear motion was obtained uh, from the external stimulation head acceleration. These are the uh, chosen uh, bundle geometry, cell S and the cell E. As you see, cell S kinocilium, the height is not much different, the, different from the tallest cilia, while cell E has tall kinocilium and the tallest sterocilia are much shorter than the kinocilium. The other thing is the hair bundle is, uh, is more round in here, similar number of uh, rows and columns, while cell E has only five columns and more than 12 rows. These are the similar uh, step response, step response of a hair bundle and uh, to obtain IX relation, simulating IX relationship of these two cells. And by the bundle geometry, although mechanical transduction channels are the same for two hair bundles, this IX relationship are dramatically different for cell E and cell S. Then we simulated a uh, natural head motion, assuming that the turtle initially tilt its head so that its gravity changes about 0.5 g, and then the turtle stretch moves its head quickly as a feeding strike motion. So this uh, light blue color zone here indicates the slow head motion, and the red color indicates quick head motion. Then the two cells responses were simulated. Basically, the bottom line is that if the 
cell S is displacement clamp, just like cell E, it would saturate in both static stimulation and active stimulation, while cell E was okay in both uh, static and uh, active stimulation, while active stimulation is saturated. Cell S was quiet during slow head motion, but it responds well in um, active peak head motion when it's viscously clamped. To summarize, we, I would like to present some number regarding hair bundle mechanics and mechanical transduction. These numbers are relevant to uh, rodent out hair cells. Typical bundle height is uh, on the order of a few micrometers. Still cilium thickness is a fraction of micrometer, like 0.3 micrometers. Number of stereocilium is 50 to 100, typically, for example, 60 stereocilia. Stereocilia bundle stiffness is on the order of five millimeter per meter. Stiffness of team link complex, which is sometimes we call gating spring stiffness, is on the order of five millimeter per meter. Gating swing of mechanical transduction channel is on the order of one nanometer. Resting tension of the team link is 20 piconewton. And the operating range of a hair bundle mechanical transduction is 30 nanometers in, in angular displacement it corresponds to about 0.5 degrees. Fast adaptation time constant is on the order of 0.1 millisecond. Slow adaptation time constant will be a few millisecond. Mechanical transduction channel uh, onset time constant, it has not been accurately measured thus far, but the, it, it, it will be faster than 10 microseconds. There are some um, remaining open questions that we, we should uh, study further. Uh, for example, does the hair bundle contribute to any kind of mechanical transduction, me mechanical resonance in the cochlea? It's still not fully uh, answered. Does the hair cell mechanical transduction adaptation contribute to hearing function? I think this is still an open question. Um, are the cochlea hair bundles unstable. The hair bundles in turtle cochlea and uh, the vestibular organs found to be unstable in, in vitro uh, freestanding condition, but it is unknown if uh, hair cell bundles in the mammalian cochlea are unstable or stable. Um, so also we would like to know what are the shared principles of hearing across different animals classes what are the unique principles of mammalian hearing? For example, for um, avian species, electrical tuning is, is one mechanism contributing to tuning. In mammals, the electrical tuning is not a viable theory. The mechanical tuning is the uh, tuning theory. Uh, finally, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my funding source and uh, my uh, past and the current collaborators. Thank you.